John Calvin on Psalm 63, verses 3 through 11. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate upon thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee, thy right hand upholdeth me. But those that seek my soul to destroy it, and go into the lower parts of the earth, they shall fall by the sword, they shall be a portion for foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God, every one that sweareth by him shall glory, but the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. It is of no consequence how large a share men possess of prosperity and of the means which are generally thought to make life secure, because the divine mercy is a better foundation of trust than any life fashioned out to ourselves and than all other supports taken together. On this account, the Lord's people, however severely they may suffer po from poverty, or the violence of human wrongs, or the languor of desire, or hunger or thirst, or the many troubles and anxieties of life, may be happy notwithstanding. For it is well with them, in the best sense of the term, when God is their friend. Unbelievers, on the other hand, must be miserable, even when the world smile upon them, for God is their enemy, and curse necessarily attaches to their lot. My soul will be satisfied, as with the riches of foods, with singing lips my mouth will praise you. If we would evidence a strong faith, we must anticipate the divine favor before it had, has been actually manifested and when there is no present appearance of its forthcoming. From the instance here set before us, we must learn to be on our guard against despondency in circumstances when we may see the wicked wallowing and rioting in the abundance of the things of this world, while we ourselves are left to pine under the want of them. David, in the present pressure to which he was exposed, might have given way to despair, but he knew that God was able to fill the hungry soul, and that he could lack nothing so long as he possessed an interest in, the, in his favor. It is God's will to try our patience in, in this life by affliction of various kinds. Let us bear the wrongs which may be done to us with meekness till the time come when all our desires shall be abundantly satisfied. It may be proper to observe that David, when he speaks in figurative language of being filled with marrow and fatness, does not contemplate that intemperate and excessive indulgence to which ungodly men surrender themselves and by which they brutify their minds. He looks forward to that moderate measure of enjoyment which would only quicken him to more alacrity in the praises of God.